Okay, we have a close-up of the fuse. We have our ground lead from our power probe, and then we have our test lead. And what we're going to do is we're just going to touch this here. That tells us that we have continuity. The negative means that green light. That tells us that, that fuse is good. If it's a, if it showed up as a nothing, you did this, you got nothing. There's a break inside the fuse. So this is how you do a fuse test. Okay, we're going to talk a little bit about the fuse. When you probe into the fuse panel, these pins, see how thick those pins are? Just a little important advice. These are micro test leads. Remember I covered these earlier? The thickness of this test lead is thinner than the pin. So when I insert this into the, into the fuse box to test, it's not going to press apart the pins. Now, if you don't have a test lead like this, you can wrap a wire around here on one side and then put the fuse back in and you have a wire hanging out to do a test, a hook to, to test for the uh, continuity between the switch and the fuse box. Okay guys, so now we're going to go through the uh, rear wiper diagram for the three door. Um, we're going to start off at the fuse. Now right here is the rear wiper 15 amp fuse. Now, as you see at the top, it says power distribution, SD110-3. The IP junction box is photo 2829. And we're going to cover each of these items and show you where they're located. As you saw in the previous video, we covered the front wiper fuse. And this, this part is going to be the rear wiper fuse. The connectors are a little different. So if you have troubles with voltage at any of the devices, you're going to follow this information and you'll be able to trace these wires to do a volt voltage test at the rear wiper motor and find out whether you have a problem in the wire all the way up to the fuse. So as we go through the series, we will go to each of the components and uh, run these tests. And uh, But we're just going to cover the basics first so that way you know what wires get power, what wires get ground. So, okay, so now we look at the top, it says hot, in, on, and that means when you turn the key, you're going to turn the key to on, and it's going to cause power to run through the rear wiper 15 amp fuse, it's going to come to a point right here, and then it's going to split, and it's going to come out pin 7, IPM, and pins 2, IPA, so, and then, uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to look at the IPA part first, Let's pull up the connector for IPA, and you're going to see pins 2 on the connector. It's going to be the orange wire, and it runs down to the rear wiper motor at connector R05 at pins 1, which is also going to be an orange wire. So we know that power runs from pins 2 to pins 1 on R05. So now if you wanted to confirm that you had power, or voltage at the rear wiper motor at the plug what you would do is you'd hook your power probe to pin 1 and you would look for voltage with key on and if you don't have voltage then your problem lies between pins 1 and all the way up to pins 2 at IPA or it could be a blown rear wiper 15 amp fuse so as we showed previously in fuse testing you're going to run a fuse test I'm not going to repeat that information again on the 15 amp fuse to make sure you got continuity you're going to check continuity between pins 2 and 1 IPA pins 2 and pins 1 of R05 and that's if you don't have voltage like you just want to make sure there's no break in the wire and uh, sometimes the you know wires rub up against the frame the body and they break through and they lose contact and they break and then uh, no electricity can flow through the wire so Okay, so now that covers that part of the circuit, let's go to the other side. Now located right here is IPM. Let's pull up the connector for IPM. This is what the connector of IPM looks like. And pin 7 is located right here. And P stands for the pink wire. So a pink wire is going to come out of pin 7 at IPM. And it's going to go down to pin 6 of the M32 connector. So now let's pull up the uh, M32 connector. And as you see in the diagram, it shows IPM in the, at the top and M32 at the bottom. And pin 6 also has the pink wire going into it. And 
what you're going to want to do is when the key is on, the voltage runs down from pin 7 at IPM to pin 6 at M32 connector. So we're going to go to the uh, inside the car and as covered earlier with the M32 connector that's connected to the multi switch, we're going to put our power probe at pin 6. Now I don't have a pin 6 on this car, but what you do is you turn your key to on, you put it on pin 6, and you should get a voltage reading on the pink wire at pin 6. It should be about 12 volts, give or take. And uh, that confirms that you have power going to the multi switch. Now, like I said before, if you have no power or voltage going to the multi switch, you know that your problem lies either at the rear wiper 15 amp fuse or uh, there's a break in the wire between pin 7 at IPM and pin 6 at M32. So, hope that clarifies uh, how to do testing from the fuse box to the switch between both systems. Now let's go to the IP junction box. Let's go look at these items uh, with pictures. Okay, the photo 2829 is covered in the previous video is located here. Let's show you where the uh, uh, IPM connector is located. The IPM connector is located here and the uh, IPA connector is located here. The rear wiper, let's go pull up the fuse diagram. As you see here, the arrow pointing to the rear wiper 15 and a half fuse is located here on the fuse panel inside the car. And uh, I think that pretty much covers it. And the M32 connector, obviously, we've seen that in the previous videos. Now, if you look at the multi switch, there's more stuff going on past, you know, M32 at pin 6. The switch uh, splits up into pins 10, 8, 10, and 9. And as we go through each of the systems, we'll, do, we'll just we'll show you how the actual system works and how it operates when voltage is added to a through a wire and the switch is turned on. How the uh, items actually work in real time so this should be interesting information for you guys who have no idea how this stuff works so but that's not part of this video right now so now let's go uh, we're gonna go talk about the uh, power distribution at the very top of the chart you'll see SD110-3 what we want to do is you want to look at um, where the power is coming from and I'm gonna explain you see how uh, it goes into the rear wiper uh, 15 amp fuse right there on the diagram well it goes to the fuse box and I remember when I showed you earlier in in uh, the other part of the video how uh, one is switched fuse fuse power the other one's direct power for the ignition so this is going to explain that and I'll make it clear for you guys each chart is linked to another chart throughout the manual so when you see this chart you'll see references to other charts and you need to basically back back uh, go through all the charts to get to the source which is the battery and uh, to trace your problem so these diagrams really help if you understand how to how to read them so so let's go to uh, let's pull up the chart for the power distribution SD110-3 okay guys now we have the power distribution it's a uh, diagram 3 in the Hyundai manual also known as SD110-3 so what we want to concentrate on is this point right here and we're gonna you see how the fuses we have the front wiper 25 amp fuse and then we have the rear wiper 15 amp fuse and uh, all the fuses run the ignition the blower the uh, and so on now you'll see that there's fuses and then there's it says C passenger compartment fuse details SD120-2. We'll show you that in a second. Um, but we're going to explain something real quick. Now if you look at the top here where it says ignition switch, you're going to notice that you're going to have a box right here. And you're going to have uh, from ignition 42, 40 amp, SD110-1. And there's a little D. We're going to go look at that in a second. And, and it, uh, what it is is pins 5 the green wire runs through M22 and then it runs down and you'll see it goes AM lock ACC on and start so when you turn the key to on right here what happens is it allows the voltage to run from the ignition switch at item D down the M22 wire which is the green wire and it runs through the on at pins 3 of the ignition switch at M22 connector. So let's pull up M22 ignition switch and show you uh, the pin configurations. Now as you see here, 
this is M22 connector, the ignition switch, and as you see the color codes, I color code the uh, connector for you to make it easier to understand. And what we're looking for is we're looking for the orange wire coming out of pin 3 of the ignition switch. Now we know by looking at this diagram that pins 5 is a green wire. It goes into the ignition switch and when it's turned to the on position, pins 3, voltage comes out. So in theory we could actually disconnect, uh, put a, put a uh, uh, power probe and probe pin 3, turn the ignition to on, and we should get voltage at pin 3 of 12 volts. So this is going to be the test you do at the ignition switch. Now if you don't get 12 volts at pin 3, you either have a bad ignition switch or you have a problem with, uh, before pins 5 on the M22 connector. So we'll keep going back up through the chart all the way to the source, but that's, this is just about the power distribution between the ignition switch and the fuse box. So we're concerned between pins 3 and pins 10 of IPM. IPM is located right here. Let's pull up the chart for IPM. This is what IPM connector looks like at pins 10. And as you see this big whole box here is called the IP junction box. And this is going to be basically your, your fuse box. And uh, IPM pins 10 has a orange wire as shown in the diagram and you'll see the little blue box that says start ignition 2 ignition 1 ACC each of those items has a specific setting on this ignition switch so now we know that when you turn the key to on pins 3 has voltage runs down to pins 10 IPM at the orange wire and then it runs into the fuse box and then it disappears and you don't see any of this stuff for the fuse box but all you see is just the fuses so Let's pull up uh, SD120-2, where it says Seek Compartment Fuse Details. Now make a note of this chart. I'm going to keep this chart on the screen as we pull up the other chart to make it easier to go back and forth. You'll notice voltage at pin 10 IPM. We know that that's going to be 12 volts at the battery through the ignition. It goes into, these, into this little uh, area with the, and then it splits. So when I showed you the test with the power probe in the other video, how to find out switched power and sorry, ignition power and fused power. What I meant by fused power is if you look at the chart, ignition power comes in through pins 10, IPM, and into the fuse. Now let's pull up the uh, SD120-2 and then we'll pull up the actual fuse box and show you what I showed you in the previous video to confirm what you see here. Okay, we have we are now in the uh, passenger compartment fuse details SD120-2. I drew the red lines to show you how the voltage flows through the fuses. This is what you see in the previous chart. This is just a blow up of the uh, one section to show you uh, where the fuses go once the power once the ignition power goes in and then goes through the fuses it shows you where they go to each component so and we already covered all these uh, connectors for the multi switch in the previous videos so I'm not going to repeat all this information again but you can see how it's distributed in this chart okay now we uh, have SD110-3 chart on the screen and we're, what we're concerned about is the item circled in blue item number D that would be SD110-1. We need to find out, it shows the ignition switch here, but we need to find out where the power comes from to the ignition. So let's go up to that chart and we'll continue. Okay, so here's SD110-1. Uh, the circle below is item D. And as we continue up our journey to the source, we see the green wire and it runs all the way up to into the fuse and relay box. And that says it goes to ignition number two, 40 amp fuse. So let's show you where that fuse is located. Okay, this is where that ignition 40 amp, ignition number two, 40 amp fuse is located. And we're going to continue our journey. Hang left and follow the black wire all the way to a main 125 amp fuse. And this is uh, 
that's where that is and then it runs all the way up around through black wire all the way to your battery inside your engine compartment so there you go guys that's a complete power distribution circuit for the window washer system so now we're going to go back to the car and we're going to install the covers and we're going to wrap this video up okay now <clears throat> as we grab the uh, the uh, top cover we're going to put on just like so in the video it just fits on like that and the bottom cover slides in underneath underneath the handle and then the two pieces will snap together just make sure that you uh, make sure the ring is is inserted around the ignition and that's pretty much it so uh, thank you for watching Jack of All Trades please subscribe leave a comment and uh, head on over to my channel and click on the Hyundai Forms icon It'll take you over my name is I Kill Barbie on Hyundai Forms if you have a question feel free to ask it and like the like the videos and thank thank you for the support guys uh, channel's growing by the day and I got a lot more videos to put up so sorry about the gap between the videos it's uh, hard to find time to edit these videos it takes a long time to take the material and put it into a format that you see here so thanks for watching guys have a good night